There's a black on black crime down in, the, in, in all the state capitals in America where black folks are voting against our interests, where black folks are voting and making us, we're getting poor and poor and other groups are getting richer and richer. All right, folks, uh, welcome aboard. That is uh, leading drudge right now, b believe it or not. Uh, a shock video that shows blacks, as they put it, turning on Democrats, saying that, that the Democrats are abusing them, them as blacks. Joining us now to talk about that and much, much more, we have a two-parter, don't miss this, executive director of the uh, TeaParty.net and national spokesman for the Congress of Racial Equality, Niger Innes, and columnist and contributing editor for TheRoot.com, David Swerdlick. Gentlemen, uh, let me start with you, uh, David. This isn't new. I mean, I've seen this before, maybe not this particular video that Drudge is linked to, but I've, I've, I've done commentary on it on this show months and months ago where the same kind of thing that blacks are frustrated with the Democratic Party and specifically with Barack Obama. Well, Steve, I mean, look, there, there's two issues at play here in this message, and I understand what you're describing, and I did see that video, and I think that it's reflective of a couple of things. It is reflective of the fact that there are black voters out there who are disenchanted with the political process, some with President Obama, some with Democrats. And if the message of that video were simply that African Americans should sort of reprioritize and think differently about the parties, Democrats and Republicans, I see no problem with that argument. The criticism I would have from what I saw in that video is this idea that that if, if people take it a step further and say that African Americans therefore think Dem uh, Democrats have sort of, you know, bamboozled them or sold them a bill of goods or something like that, because the fact is that Democrats right now do support and favor and promote policies that, in general, the majority of African Americans support. Something like Obamacare is supported by seventy-five percent of African Americans. Something the well, well, right, and so and so was okay, David. Good point. But so was Obama supported by ninety-five percent of African Americans, and that hasn't worked out so well for the African American community. So let me ask Niger, uh, your take on this. My take on this is that there's a revolution brewing. And while there have been little peaks and valleys of uh, disenchantment reflected from uh, black leaders across the country with the Democratic Party, in particular with uh, President Obama, I think you have waves now of different organizations. My organization, the Tea Party.net, in a broad coalition with the Congress of Racial Equality, uh, the Cura Organization, American Conservatives of Color. We launched a press conference, uh, King, we launched a press conference a couple of weeks ago uh, at the Martin Luther King Memorial just asking the black community before the uh, Democrats play the race card from the bottom of the deck in their GOTV effort to get out the black vote in the black community. They're not talking about Obamacare. They're not talking about how Democratic policies are popular with the black community. They are using the most crass, vicious appeals to race using the tragedy of Michael Brown and his, his death uh, as, and, and the Georgia uh, Democratic Party actually had an ad that said, if you don't want another Michael Brown, then you've got to come out and vote Democrat. So the reason they're doing that is because they know that their failed policies have not benefited the African-American community. They have not benefited the little guy. Income inequality is worse now than ever. Black poverty has gone up by 20 All right, what, what about it, David? I mean, what, he's, what the, the statistics he's giving are, are accurate. Okay, no, they're, they're, look, this is what the statistics show. African-Americans do have higher unemployment than the average. African-Americans do have uh, more underwater mortgages. African-Americans lag behind the national averages in health outcomes and educational outcomes, et cetera. I'm not, I'm not, Niger and I are, are on the same page on that. I, I know Niger, I've interviewed Niger. I think the, the, the issue that we're getting to here is that I think in this case, with regard to this video, Niger is overstating the case a little bit. Polls have shown that in this election, 
Democrats and the president are sort of losing a, a small amount of black support coming up in this election. So if African Americans are were once supporting President Obama and Democrats 90, 95%, maybe they're only supporting the president and Democrats this election 80, 85%. But you're still talking about something like 85% support in the African American community at this moment in time for President Obama and for for generally speaking for democratic policy. So is there a shift? Yes. Is it a wave, as Niger stated? I, I simply don't see that. All right, but David, <laughs> and, and, and we don't have time to the... Go ahead, Niger. No, just really quick. I mean, it's not just this coalition, Restore the Dream 2014. Uh, by the way, go to restorethedream2014.com and you'll see all our coalition partners. We were in Ferguson, Missouri. We were in Charlotte. We were in Raleigh, Durham, meeting with black pastors, black leaders, even a black Democrat senator... Uh, out of Ferguson, Missouri, who told me that the Democratic Party of her state of Missouri has not shown any empathy to the black community in Ferguson, and she got more reach out from Republicans. This is a tidal wave. All right, guys, guys, stay where you are. We're going to come back. We're going to switch topics a little bit and talk about something that Charles Barkley had to say. We'll let you hear it and you guys weigh in on it. Uh, but first, I want to check in on the uh, South Dakota Senate race. Of course, the election is a week away. We're going to do that with our Road to the Midterms update, and it's here right now. South Dakota is a red state when it comes to picking presidents and governors. That's not always the case when it comes to congressmen. But with Democratic Senator Tim Johnson retiring this year, Republicans saw a chance for a victory. The party needs to pick up six Senate seats to shift the balance of power their way. The GOP candidate, popular former South Dakota Governor Mike Rounds. Rounds went into the race favored to win, but he's run into trouble, namely former Republican Senator Larry Pressler. Pressler is running as an independent which has made it hard for Rounds to rally the conservative vote wholly around him. Rounds did, however, recently pick up an endorsement from the Tea Party. Then there's the Democratic challenger, Rick Weiland. Weiland is no stranger to politics, but his campaign is a bit untraditional. Weiland recently produced a country music video and is often seen pulling out his guitar to serenade crowds at campaign rallies. Weiland is keeping the race incredibly close, trailing Rounds by only a couple of points in the polls. Pressler is running a close third, though a recent Survey USA poll puts Pressler ahead of Weiland. Pressler hasn't said which party he would caucus with should he pull out the win. 